So, hi guys, this is Dr. Edwards again. So, I want to give some uh, comments about uh, the homework assignment where you have problem 1.8.6 on page 61 and also problems 1.8.10 and 1.8.11. Uh, so all of this is under the, the general heading of the uh, complex variables, complex numbers, complex functions. Whenever now you're going to eventually have to deal with uh, uh, the polar form of complex variables, such as what's written here, make sure that the angles are expressed in radians. Don't leave the angles in degrees, even if you if your calculator gives the value in the degrees. You must change it to radians before you uh, proceed with one of these type equations. Remember that uh, 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. The, uh, the degree unit it is not a physically determined unit. Uh, that's an arbitrary human creation. But 2 pi radians comes right out of physics. Um, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi radians. So it, it, there, there is something measurable directly in terms of what we call radians. Let me get on with these problems now. Uh, 1.8.6. You, what you want to do there is to show the particular outcome, and I'll get to that. But I'm going to use a series of identities uh, from, from basic um, uh, transcendental functions uh, that will uh, get to the answer that we want in this problem. I'm going to use the double angle formula often, that the sine of the quantity a plus b and these are arbitrary angles, is equal to sine of a plus the cosine of b uh, plus the, sine, the cosine of a times the sine of b. And similarly, the cosine of the quantity a plus b is the cosine of, of a times the cosine of b minus the sine of a times the sine of b. And also I'm going to use this Euler's uh, um, formula often or, or uh, that e to the i theta is the cosine of theta plus uh, i sine theta and similarly e to the negative i theta is the cosine of theta minus i theta. Okay, so we're going to use that often uh, in this uh, procedure. So firstly then I go on. Uh, let, let, me, let me say this first. Uh, there's always this uh, e to the i theta um, in the cosine or the, the circle of functions. But in the hyperbolic functions, such as the hyperbolic uh, cosine, hyperbolic cosine, there is no um, imaginary num uh, uh, number i. It's e to the actual value of theta minus, uh, plus e to the minus theta over 2. That is cosh uh, theta, which are the hyperbolic uh, cosine of theta, and the sine, uh, hyperbolic sine of, of sinc theta is e to the theta minus e to the negative theta over 2. Okay, so let me go on now. So this is what we actually want to show. How do we do this? The idea is that, so I'm going to use the double angle formula from above that the sine of x plus i y, where here both of the uh, numbers were unspecified as to whether they are real numbers or imaginary numbers, I'm going to write it in here, that this is sine of z, where it's equal to x plus uh, i. Also, the cosine is equal to that. And also to show part b is here. Okay, so what I, I go on and collect some more identities that I'm going to need. 
The first one I'm going to get is back here. I'm going to use this, whereas you typically see it where theta is real. The same is true when theta is, is complex right here. The cosine of z is equal to e to the i z plus e to the negative i z over 2. There's a negative sign there. And the sine of z of z is equal to e to the i i z minus e to the negative i z over 2i. So I'm going to substitute now for z i v, where v is any uh, um, variable, okay? Uh, that, any real verb. So when I substitute here, I get these two nice expressions for the cosine of a imaginary quantity in terms of the cosh uh, of a real quantity. And the same is true here. I get the sine of an imaginary uh, quantity is equal I, the hyperbolic sine of that real quantity. So having gotten those now, I can come back and get on with the task at hand. So the, the sign of the quantity uh, x plus iy is equal to this expression here. And the cosine then, we, we just figure out what they are. And so now we can substitute it here. And we get then that the sine of x plus iy is sine of x times the cosh of y plus i, the cosine of x times the uh, hyperbolic sine of y. That's the first expression that we wanted to get. Also, in a similar manner, you go through the, the calculations here, you, you make the substitution, and you get this expression for the uh, cosine of this uh, complex verb written in terms of the, the sum of products. Also, now you want to show that uh, the magnitude uh, squared uh, of um, sine of z is equal to this expression. And the magnitude squared of the cosine of z is this expression. First thing I do is to realize that the, um, sine, the magnitude squared is the sine complex conjugate of z times the sine of z. So therefore, the complex conjugate of this uh, of z is x minus iy, if I'm going to have x plus y as a sign. Then I go on to the same kind of procedures I did above, and you will see this, and you finally get this expression here, that, uh, that the absolute value of the sine of z squared is equal to this expression here. And you can simplify it even further and you get this quantity here. Also a similar number is determined, or similar expression is gotten when you go through the expression to find the absolute value of the uh, uh, cosine of, of z squared. All right, so you should be able to get these values here and have this turned in as part of your homework. Okay, let me go to the next section that I want to get to, which is now parts of problem 1.8.10. And part A, I'll just do part A, and you do part A, and it has part A, B, and C. Find the Cartesian form for all values of this expression, one third of negative eight. All right, how should you do that? One of the things I want to do, so you should realize that negative eight is a complex number. What are the quantities though for that number? I drew this figure so I could see it. Negative eight would be somewhere on the x axis in this, um, in the negative range here. And therefore, in this uh, polar form, the angle phi has to be equal to pi. And I can go on and calculate the, the, the modulus, which is the square root of whatever this quantity is, 
uh, here, which happened to be negative 8 in this case. So it's the square root of negative 8 squared plus 0 squared is just equal to r. Uh, and so r, r equals to 8 in this case. Therefore, then, using the general formula that the, the cube root of negative 8 is equal to, yes, the cube root of the uh, of r, which is the modulus, e to the i, and this angle phi that we calculated there, plus 2 pi over m over 3, where n is 3, 1 to the n is 3 in this case. Now I can put in uh, values of m, and from those values I will determine the actual um, expressions in the Cartesian form. When m is equal to zero, I get this expression here, you see, um, which gives me two times the cosine of pi over three plus i sine of pi over three. I can write it in, in degrees if I wish, but still the values come out ultimately uh, as actual real numbers. One half for the real term, and then i square root of 3 over 2 for the imaginary term. Cancel the twos, and this becomes the first value uh, that we get. The second value is had from substituting m into the expression above, and you get then the cube root of negative 8 is 2 times e to the quantity pi plus 2 pi times m equals 1. Put in that 1 there, go through the same process, and you find that um, this quantity here becomes negative 2. So negative 2 is one of the um, uh, Cartesian form for uh, the uh, negative, the q root of negative 8. Put in m equals 2, and I find the next one, which is this final expression here. And you go and you can write it there. So those are the three roots. If you put in m equals 3, m equals 4, on and on, you get to repeat the same values. So you can stop right there. You've gotten all the roots. Let me go to this next part here that I, that I want to share with you. And this is then this problem, uh, 1.8, 11. Find the polar forms of all values of this quantity here. So what you're really doing, you you are the, this is the cube. So you're finding the power of the cube uh, of one plus i. The best way to do that is to write this quantity um, in the polar form, in the exponential form. That's how I think you should do it. Write it in exponential form. So when you do that, you find that the magnitude of, of z is the square root of 2. And you find that the angle, the tangent of the angle is 1 over 145 degrees, power 2. Therefore, z equal to the square root of 2, e to the uh, theta, I'm calling it theta here, is equal to the square root of 2, e to the power of 4. And that implies then, so you just cube this three times. And when you cube this quantity here, you get z cubed plus 2 to the 3 halves e to the i pi over 4 q. That becomes z cubed 2 to the 3 halves e to the i 3 pi over 4. And you can then write this in sines and cosines if you wish. All right, I'm going to stop right there. You can, uh, I was about to show the part B. I want you then to go on and do part B uh, for this problem. Um, study these problems here. See how I have implemented them and get busy on turning in all your homework uh, for this set of problems, okay? Okay, guys, uh, I'm gone. Have a good day.